Boom, boom, boom. And here we go. It's Monday. Yeah. Monster cheers. Boom. I'm down to one cup of coffee a day right now. This is my second day. One cup a day. Had some uh, stomach problems, and I think it might be due to coffee. So I'm chilling out on it. How are you, my friends? It's Monday. What's the date? April 10th. I got this one right. I'm sure this is right. Monday, April 10th in the year. Sometimes I say 1997. Sometimes I say 2007. But right now it's 2017. How the hell are you? It's your pal Malin. Monday morning. I'm in my uh, about midway through my morning process of working. Uh, I'm trying to take care of some business and get things done. And I actually scheduled for 9 a.m. to start a YouTube video. So right now I'm actually 30 minutes behind because I just felt like watching a Howard Stern video. <laughs> but man, I hope you're doing well. This morning I uh, am listening to a lot of different music. Here's, what, here's what's going on. I'm writing music again a lot. I just played, I played two shows in the last few months. Feels great. And one of the things that I struggle with is whatever kind of music I'm listening to at the time, I start writing music like it. So, for example, if I'm writing, if I'm listening to 50 Cent every day, I'll start writing gangster rap music. <laughs> That's just it. If I'm listening to Bob Marley, I'll start writing reggae music. If I'm listening to uh, Waylon Jennings, I'll start writing country songs. So I've kind of figured this out recently. And I know the kind of music I want to make. And so now that I'm back in music writing mode, I'm only listening. I'm trying to only listen to the types of music that I want to write. And what I want to write right now are pretty fairly simple acoustic songs with a spacey vibe mixed with a country, like, a, like an Oklahoma music type of vibe. Red dirt, Americana, whatever you want to call it. Country, redneck stuff. And so I'm listening to bands that I'm trying to limit myself to bands that do that kind of stuff. You know, at the gym, instead of listening to Gangster Rap and Pantera, which, you know, if I listen to Pantera, I start writing like angry lyrics. So instead of that, I'm listening to uh, the Batman soundtrack. I posted this on my Twitter and YouTube. Twitter is twitter.com slash Malandaris. Go follow me there. Facebook is facebook.com slash malandaris.com, all spelled out. Malandaris, D-O-T-C-O-M. I post a lot of stuff on both of those places. I'm also on Snapchat, Instagram, all that stuff. But to tell you the truth, Facebook and Twitter are still my favorite. <clears throat> what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So I posted that on um, my social feed the other day that i was been listening to Batman. Batman versus Superman is what I listened to last week. Really transforms the gym workout into a different thing. Instead of being like angry and rocking out like most of these idiots, you just get into a focused groove with these weird soundtrack music and you're just working out and it just puts you in another zone. Feels great. Highly recommended. I at first, I actually got it from a guy years ago, posted on Twitter. I forget who he was. His Twitter handle was something like The One. Guy in the UK, just ripped to shreds, probably on all kinds of steroids and growth hormones, but he nailed it on the soundtrack. It sounded ridiculous at the time, as it probably sounds to you right now. I thought, why does he listen to the Batman soundtrack? That's the dumbest thing. Then I tried it last week, and I was like, oh, <laughs> this works great. But so at the gym, I'm listening to the Batman soundtrack. And then in my life, just hanging around the house, working, walking. When I go for walks, I listen to music. Instead of listening to Black Sabbath, I'm listening to uh, Beck. Because I haven't listened to Beck in a hundred years. He came out and was big when I was like 21. You know, 1995 or something. And then, he, then I kind of lost, he fell off my radar. Then he popped up and won that Grammy a few years ago. And Kanye jumped on stage to complain that Beyonce should have won it. And then after the awards show, Kanye ranted that Beck, if Beck respected artistry, he would give Beyonce his trophy and that if the VMAs or whoever it was 
didn't start respecting Beyonce and Kanye and all these true artists that they were going to boycott the Grammys or whatever it was. And, uh, you know, Beck won that Grammy, and I remember that put him back on my radar, and I didn't start listening to him again until about two weeks ago. And I downloaded an album called, uh, what's it called? Sea Change, Beck Sea Change. And it's, I've been listening to it for a couple weeks now, just mind-blowing. I forgot how good this guy is. But he's in the vibe of what I want to do. I was listening to it going, well, this kind of, ex- he's already done kind of the, he's in the direction I want to go. It's not exactly the same, of course, but it's similar. Because I don't want to play co- like Americana, Red Dirt country music. I would never want to do that. I don't ever want to be like a single thing. I want to do sp- a space version of it. Like if, uh, like if Leon Russell was kidnapped by a Jane's Addiction spaceship. Or if Willie Nelson was abducted by aliens and then brought back to Earth with a new half of his brain was transformed into a, an alien brain. That's what the direction I'm kind of going, feeling is. And Beck's doing some cool shit. And man, if you've never heard of Beck, if you're under the age of, let's say, 30, you've probably never heard of Beck. Except for when Kanye complained about him. But he's amazing, and I, I, I encourage you, I'm just going to name this video something about Beck. Because it's amazing, and he's it hit, the stuff he's doing now and throughout the years is way better than ninety percent of the stuff that's out right now on the radio that you're probably listening to. It's not get pumped up and dance music. It's it's real music. It's like art music. And the funny thing is, Kanye West he made that statement about if Beck respects true artistry, he'll give his trophy to Beyonce. What Kanye didn't realize <laughs> was that. There, number one, there are other artists outside of his circle of friends that are fucking incredible. And just because he doesn't listen to them doesn't mean that they're not incredible. And I don't know if this is true, but I heard a story that Kanye was in a restaurant uh, a while after that Grammys episode. And some music was on the radio, on the stereo in the, in the restaurant. And he was like, "Who? what is this? It's fucking incredible. And they kind of looked and said... That's the Beck album. He was like, oh, man. You know, I fucked up. This is incredible. (laughs) And, uh, you know, so Beck kind of got the last laugh on that one. And Beck's such a humble, cool guy. Even after that episode at the Grammys, after the the show, they interviewed Kanye, and he was ranting Beck should give back his trophy, and he was, uh, you know, it's racist and all this stuff that he won. And then then they interviewed Beck, and he said, he said, whatever. He said, I'm glad he jumped on stage. You know, he's a cool guy. I, I, did, I was shocked that I won as well. And, you know, I still think Kanye's a genius. I love his, I love his music. You know, he was really humble about it. It just goes to show how, how you can act one way or you can act the other. They're both big stars. They're both multimillionaires. And both, both make great music. But if I'm leaning one way or the other as far as, as, far as artistry goes... Between Beyonce and Beck, I'm going Beck all the way. Beyonce's a great entertainer, great dancer and singer. But an artist, like a musical genius, not in my book. But when you listen to Beck, it's like, this is some, to me, it's like, this is art. It's like listening to art instead of listening to entertaining pop music. It's it's art. That's just my opinion. But I But I encourage you because, and I say this because, I look at my YouTube stats and my probably 60% of my viewers are between 25 and 34 years old. If you're 25, you've never heard of Beck. And if you have, you probably heard the one song like I'm a Loser Baby, which was a huge smash. But if you only know that song, you need to go back. I've got three albums on my phone right now. Uh, Sea Change. Another one is Mutations. And another one is Morning Phase. Morning Phase is the one that won the Grammy. And you can see my old gym playlist there. It's all 50 Cent, Alice in Chains, you know, heavy metal. There's some uh, rapper named Bones from Dallas, Texas, an underground guy. Just an angry alpha male type of playlist. And it puts you in a bad mood. It, like, it just makes me want to punch someone in the face at the gym, which, which is good. 
But now that I'm listening to the Batman soundtrack, totally, totally different. Makes me a nicer person, more focused when I work out is great. But these Beck albums I'm listening to on repeat, I'm probably going to draw some inspiration from him. He makes, he uses a lot of weird sounds and a lot of strange things, and I'm loving it. So if you're into real music, like you're, you're probably not going to dance or be super entertained, but if you, you know, especially if you get a little high and put on some headphones and listen to um, Sea Change, you're probably going to walk away a fan. I've turned you guys on to a few people. Jane's Addiction, some people didn't resonate with that like I get it they're they're kind of out there but if you give them a shot and listen to everything you'll be a fan then I gave you guys Jeremy Enoch I got a lot of uh, thank yous for Jeremy Enoch everyone was like holy shit thank you for turning me on to sunny day real estate and so this is who we're talking about now is Beck and I'm not gonna you know he had a huge he was a huge smash when he first came out in like the early 90s he was kind of he came out just after Nirvana I think don't quote me on that and I was living in Dallas, Texas, and I remember reading a, this is like 1992, I remember reading a, a local newspaper, the Dallas Observer or something, and it talked about Beck. He was brand new, maybe his first album was out, but he was playing little clubs, and they had a picture of him with an, a beat up looking acoustic guitar, a harmonica on his mouth with one of those little stands. And there was like duct tape on his guitar and he had tape on his equipment. And it was just, it looked like this. I was like, wow, that's really interesting looking. Who knew? Who knows what the music sounds like? Then I heard the, the song, uh, I think his first album was called Odele. But I heard the song, I'm a Loser Baby, and, and that was cool. And he was the biggest star on MTV and the radio for like six months. And then he, you know, peaked and then it just kind of drifted and he became part of the music world. And to tell you the truth, when I look at Beck's career, uh, that's the career you want. Because we all dream in the beginning of the, you know, quadruple platinum, million, billion albums sold, world tours, fans everywhere, jillions of dollars. You want to be the number one biggest star on earth. You want to be Michael Jackson, right? But look at what happens to those people. You know, Michael Jackson lost his mind and, and became a recluse you know, was spending money crazy, transformed his face and his skin and could st just couldn't stop getting surgery. Look at Elvis. Elvis was the biggest star as well, and he went nuts. He gained, you know, 80 pounds, was hooked on pills. A reclusive guy would hide out in hotel rooms and shoot shotguns at the TV, you know, just crazy stuff. Look at Kanye, one of the biggest stars on earth, loses, lost his mind recently and had to go into a hospital and cancel his tour. Like, it's all... It really, look at Britney Spears shaving her head, like all this stuff. Justin Bieber, he's freaking out a little bit. Like I could see him killing someone or just disappearing at some point. But it's kind of like that gigantic success is almost a curse. And when you get it, you might not want it. And so I envy the careers of a guy like Beck. He had a smash hit in the early 90s. And here we are 25 years later, and he's still pumping out great albums, still touring, still, I mean, he won a Grammy, still winning awards, still making millions of dollars, I'm sure. But if you don't know who Beck is, you don't know who Beck is. He could walk down the street and, you know, five out of 10 people wouldn't know who he was. Maybe eight out of 10 people wouldn't know who he was. That's what you want. Justin Bieber can't walk down the street. Elvis Presley couldn't walk down the street. Michael Jackson couldn't go anywhere. Kanye, the same way, you know, paparazzi everywhere. But Beck could kind of, you know, if you put on a hat, he could walk around the grocery store and do whatever he want. That, that's what you want. That's the dream. You know, just carve out a little place. I used to want to be the biggest star in the world, but anymore I'm like, I would just like to be able to carve out a little place and to be where I could play clubs all across the country or all over the world. And you know, and maybe no matter where you played, 300 people would show up or 500. That would be incredible because you could make a living it's enough people to feel like you're doing, like it's a real show. You know, there's nothing worse than touring in empty bars. Like when you're on tour for a month and you play 25 shows, and at 17 of the shows, there's no one there that knows who you are. You're just kind of making your first round. You know, those are tough, man. People are telling you to be quiet. They're watching the football game, all this kind of stuff. But to be able to have fans worldwide, and, and draw three to 500 people a night everywhere you go, and they know who you are, so it's your world. You can create your own reality, man. 
that's my viewpoint right now. I mean, maybe I'll, it'll change tomorrow, but today I'm like, that would be perfect. And the, it seems like the way to do it was you need the one big hit, you know. At some point you had to do something to put you on the map and then you're good. I always thought if I could just have one big song for one year, I could tour the rest of my life on that song. A lot of people do it. Vanilla Ice still tours. He's playing clubs still 30 years later. You know, all these bands are still playing clubs. You go see Rat still playing around town. Bullet Boys are playing at the Whiskey. Bullet Boys had a hit 25 years ago. And they're still playing. You know, they still do little clubs and stuff and people like me show up. There's three to 500 people that know every word to every song and are huge fans. That's the dream. But anyway, man, that's really all I've got. 15 minutes in and I've got to do some work. I'm running campaigns in the background and I just launched them into the stratosphere and I need to check and make sure I'm not losing thousands of dollars. That's the shitty thing about being an affiliate marketer or an online marketer or a digital marketing anything is if you run gigantic campaigns, sometimes if you go to lunch with someone and you don't pay attention and you don't have any employees watching it for you, you can wrap up the lunch, get in your car, check your stats and realize that that lunch just cost you $2,200. <laughs> it's happened many, 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 many times. But I, so I try to keep an eye on things and I try to run them in a way that that can't happen anymore instead of like uncorking my daily budget to $100,000 and hoping for the best, I, I, I fine-tune it a little more these days. We'll talk about more than, uh, that more in a different video. Today, just Beck. So if you want something to do today, check it out. First of all, meditate, say a little prayer, take a deep breath, prepare for the worst and, expect, and hope for the best, and then listen to Beck Sea Change, Beck Mutations, and this morning I got Beck Morning Phase, which is the Grammy-winning uh, album that he won the award for so drop those three things on your phone or go to youtube or go to itunes wherever you get your music and check it out and that's it man if you know beck if you don't know beck post in the comments i want to hear your feedback on what i just talked about if you like kanye if you think beyonce is better than beck let me know i'm always curious about these these comments you guys give it's really entertaining insightful and sometimes scary the things that i see in there but either way, I love it because, look, I'm a mess too. We're all our, we're all our own certain kind of mess. And that what, that's what makes us unique. That what's, that's what makes the world interesting. If we were all the same, it would be quite a boring place. So anyway, I hope you're doing well. Uncle Malin loves you. 9.49 a.m. Monday morning, April 10th, 2017. And that's it. Have a nice day. And as always, I will see you in the future.